Ladies and gentlemen, Interface Gambia TV is back again to recognize the fantastic work by professionally and hardworking individuals. Friday, 20th of June, 2019, we will begin with an award night and a welcoming canopy. Dinner dance from 8 p.m. till 1 a.m. Live at King George, 713 Eastern Avenue, Ilford, London, IG2, 73H. Please be there on time. We are going to recognize and create platforms within our society and give opportunity to upcoming young people. Saturday, 29 June, UK's Gambian Fashion Runway Show, live at the King George 713 Eastern Avenue. Seven RH with Gambian Stuff Fashion Designers and a welcoming cocktail refreshment. Come and support. See for yourself. Elegant fashion and designs from the smiling coast of Africa. 8 p.m. till 1 a.m. Sunday, 30th, Fashion Exhibition with all the top designers and kids from Day Bouncy Castle. Face paint and food stalls at the Bowling Back in Road London, E6, 1PW from 3 p.m. till 10 p.m. It's just a one ticket for all events. People over 25 years, 35 pounds. Under 25, 25 pounds. Those under 15, only 15 pounds. These tickets are only available online for now and the offer ends May 28. For more info, please visit www.ukgambianfwe.co.uk It's a red carpet door with a welcoming canopy. For table booking, please contact Ticketbox office 0208-998-1007 or 07538-103-379. Interface TV. With us, the Gambia Chikau Chikanam Rec. This event is powered by Gambia High Commission London, Gam Design, Small World Money Transfer, The Pregame Hotel, Norton Garden Services, Mr. Jamil Trawale, Jalof Flavors, Juve Hair Beauty Salon, IKEA Resource, Mr. Young's Dabo, Jesse Event, Global Properties, and Summer Africa Online Newspapers. And welcome to Halle Joklen. I'm Kine. I'm Mariama. And today we're here with a former professional football player and his business partner. We've got Cherno Samba and Festus Asante. How are you guys? Good. Welcome to the Thank show. You. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Good to be here. Um, so just to get started, Cherno, just a quick question about you first coming over to this country because you were born in Gambia, right? Yeah, I was born in Gambia. Perfect. So how was that for you? Um, it was um, an eye opener. I remember when I when I was coming down. Um, my mom gave me this long overall jacket that came all the way down to my, <laughs> to my legs and um, I was just, you know, um, happy that I was coming to mm -hmm. see my, my mom and my brother mm -hmm. at the time. So um, all I can remember was when I came out of the airport, I just saw my mom and I just ran up to her oh. straight away. So, yeah. Did you come in the winter? Because I feel like everyone, yeah, I think everyone, comes, everyone comes in the winter. Everyone yeah. In the winter. <laughs> it must have been because she gave me this overall jacket mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know, came all the way to my to my ankles. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And what was the adjustment like? from being a child in Gambia, I'm sure you were just like free, able to go out and play with... Yeah, where, where we lived, there was a big field and I just, you know, stay there and just play football mm. for a hours, so um, that's what I can remember, to be honest. Mm. And um, obviously I came here at a young age. Mm -hmm. Up in a flat <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you might, yeah, coming from, you know, you're always out mm. there on the field and stuff, so coming here is um, cold and a little bit, um, you know, but it's part and parcel of life, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And what was it like growing up in South London? It was it was it was rough at the time. Um, when I, when we first came, we lived in Watford for about probably a month, and then um, my dad um, had a good job in London, so we had to come back. Um, I remember coming back here. I was crying on the car because mm. I already made friends, and I just started school then, mm. and um, you know, but we was coming to London. So mm. when, when I came to South East, we came to Peckham, mm. and it was really 
you know, it was hostile at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And is that where you guys met in Peckham? Or? That's what I am. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So what was it like for you growing up in Peckham? Cause so um, my family grew up in Streatham at first and we moved to Campbell Peckham when we were about 10 or 11. So mm. it's like secondary school. Mm -hmm. It's a big shift because like Streatham's the suburbs and it's mm. kind of a bit slower kind of way mm -hmm. of living. And when I went to school in Peckham in the 90s and back then, it was, it was a bit, it was, it was hot stuff. Really. Mm -hmm. I had to adjust very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, I'm good with my mouth. <laughs> got me out of trouble a few times. Got me in trouble as well. <laughs> it was, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what was it like as young black boys growing <clears throat> up in your teen years? On the estate that we grew up on was weird because we had a lot of, um, there was a lot of ethnic minorities and a lot of working class white people. And even though there was a, even though we all coexisted, there was always this kind of weird energy with right. some of them. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, the, the vibe from some of them, mm. and some, some of them would be quite quite mean and nasty some mm. of the time, um, with comments, and you just kind of got used to it. Some of them you kind of put hands on if it went <laughs> too, too far, but overall, and they do things like damage mm. like oh, our parents' cars and mm. stuff. Wow. Yeah, it was always just, it was weird. Mm. Yeah, I don't know, I feel my, my dad's car or something. Yeah, yeah something oh like that. Gosh. And my dad's as yeah. well, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. I couldn't imagine that. We grew up in Hackney, but mm. yeah, never, I mean, my dad's window probably got smashed up. Or something like that, yeah. yeah. You know the weirdest thing? You say it so casually, <laughs> yeah. but we accepted that, didn't mm. we? Yeah, we It's did. like people damaging our property, even though we all we were trying to grow together. Mm. But I think a lot of the time they resent it, the fact that we were trying to grow and be, be better. Yeah. Like, happy just to kind of... Mm -hmm. Stuck in the thing, yeah. Um, but we kind of just got used to it, yeah. Mm. That's all we knew, really. So. Yeah. And was it quite hard to stay out of trouble, like being from South London and everything? Yeah, because mm. um, the people that we always hang around with and um, play football with and that, some of them were up to no good. Mm. Um, you know, love drugs and... Mm. Um, fights and all that stuff, like gang, what, culture. gang mm -hmm. culture sort of thing, but um, what helped me and him was <clears throat> I wanted to be a professional footballer, mm -hmm. um, that was my my aim and that was my, you know, my passion from day one mm -hmm. and with him he was more into the education sort of route, so, mm -hmm. um, so we just you know, studied, you know, yeah, he my, also always studied the ship. My dad was on my case because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think he could tell I was quiet. Say ruffian is the right word, but I was I'd like to be out and about, mm. but my dad made sure that my like, schoolwork came first. Mm. So as long as I got schoolwork, then I can go yeah. like go and play football. And yeah, my dad was like that as well. Mm. But he was just in the end, he just like this was my talent, so he mm. just, you know they just sort of support me. Mm -hmm. But my my mom and my dad, they were both um, they were very strict, and so you got to do your schoolwork. Of course, <laughs> but yeah. Like, but, I just wanted to be a football. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when was it the first time that you thought I'm going to take this serious and try? And um, it was <clears throat> when we moved. Well, when when we was in Watford, we had a game. We we played a game, and um, I was playing for Watford. Um, sorry, the the, the my, my school team, and that's when it hit home. But I didn't really think of anything. So when we came to London, I had a game again for Oliver Goldsmith. And I think I was ten. That was his primary school. Yeah, that was mm. my was in my primary school, and um, I must have scored about seven goals. Wow. Yeah, in the game, and then there was a guy called Harry who contacted my my parents and said, "Look, this boy can play football." Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then that's when he started, and then that's when he started hitting home that look. You know, this is what you want to do. Yeah. Do, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, at the age of ten. Mm. Wow. And then, so from there, do you like join local teams or? Yeah. Then from there, I was playing for my school team, and then after I went to play for Harry, which was a Mottingham, it was a Sunday league football, and then um, I was just scoring goals left, right, and centre. Mm. And then that's when all the, you know, the the, the professional clubs started taking notice. I e Charlton at the time, West Ham, mm. and Millwall, mm. but Millwall was closer to me, so. <coughs> We decided to, you know, to, to go with me, mm -hmm. and it was I think it was about <clears throat> our four or five boys that mm -hmm. were still playing. So me all came to them and said, "Look, we want all these four or five boys." Mm -hmm. So we just went and then never looked back. How likely is it that <laughs> kind of stuff even happens? happens yeah, it's, 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 yeah. It's, 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 it's uh, you know, it's, it's what it is. It's, mm -hmm. um, for me, it was at the time Martin and we had the best youth team. Mm -hmm. um, it was four or five of us and we just gelled together mm. good friends everything. and we just yeah. battered everything. Mm. Um, so it just meant to be. Yeah. Mm. And then like fast forward a little bit to your teen years when mm. 
you are like on the, you were playing for the when you were 14 yeah is it? yeah playing yeah, for England, for England. Yeah. yeah so I got scared so what happened was I think it was about 30 50 of us that we had to go on England trials and um, so we went there so these times I would decide for Millwall mm -hmm. and um, I remember when I was standing on you know it was me a guy called David, David Bentley he used to play for Arsenal mm -hmm. so we we're just standing on the touch like <clears throat> and everyone was playing so I was getting scared I'm like oh, ben, they're not gonna play us like they're not gonna pick us because everyone's playing I remember his first thing was he nudged me and said look they know what we what we can do that's why we're standing there mm -hmm. we have the name on the team sheet trust me and it was right so in the end I found out that we were already picked you know, I was oh. picked because of my runs I was very good at my runs and you know coming deep pick up the ball turn and Bentley was Bentley you know mm -hmm. so um <clears throat> After that, I was only 14 and I got picked for England. Mm -hmm. And so I was playing a year above my age, which was, I was playing for the under 15s. And then throughout, mm -hmm. yeah. And how was that for you at the time? Like, how were you feeling? It was, um, it was good because I remember prior to that, I was watching the England game. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was only about 13, I was mm -hmm. watching on TV. So the first thing that came to my head was, I want to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and, um, I want to be a professional footballer and I want to play for England. These were my two goals that I had that I set up for myself. And um, so when that when the call came and they wrote a letter to my mom, to my school and to my club, you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just <coughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was very happy and obviously my parents were very happy for me as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Does that but is there like a kind of pressure as well at the same time? You say? At that time, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was just just happy that you know I got picked for England. Come on, you mm -hmm. know, a kid from Gambia that just mm -hmm. came in. <laughs> so I was just I was I was really happy. Mm -hmm. I was really really happy. And um, yeah. And what was it like at the time? Do you feel as if you had the support that you needed? Yeah, because um, my my parents they were very strict. You know, mm -hmm. my mom and dad they were very strict in terms of your schoolwork, schoolwork, mm -hmm. but. I was a kid as well, um, well they, they know now by reading yeah. my book, but um, <laughs> I was very good at home, but outside of the home I was this somebody mm -hmm. else, you mm -hmm. know, I was um, very rebellious, um, I just wanted to do what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. but when I'm at home I'm this shy kid that would do the chores, <laughs> do the dishes and all this stuff, mm -hmm. and stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so they were supportive in that sense, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. But I was just half of the things they won't even know what I was up to. Doing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were you guys doing it together, half of these things? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> some of the things. Yeah, yeah, some of the things we're up to. Yeah, sometimes. Mm. <laughs> but would they like come to your games and everything? Oh yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. They always come to my mm -hmm, games. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, and then, yeah. so what was it like when you start being more recognised, like publicly? <clears throat> more opportunities um, were coming yeah it was quite crazy at that time mm -hmm. yes yeah that's when that's when the big clubs kind of came in for him so obviously he's playing for england now so his name's getting out there he's scoring goals mm -hmm. there was that goal he scored on against is it northern ireland uh, uh against wales well sorry yeah. um, where he went along from the halfway line and mm -hmm. yeah that was a good goal mm -hmm. um and then i think uh liverpool Arsenal, Man U and Leeds. Mm -hmm. Leeds at the time they were they were a huge, mm -hmm. huge club. Um, they all came in for him, they wanted to and he was what, fifteen? Yeah. At the time. And they all kind of wanted him to come up and have trials. Not trials, but come and just have a look around the club and just pick one. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. At mm -hmm. the time around the estate, it was it was chaos. That reporters would be around. One time it was a mm -hmm. helicopter. Wow. Um, a helicopter, wow. Yeah, like a news um mm -hmm. uh, news a news helicopter and it was it was mad. Mm. It was mad. It was a lot of attention. Yeah. What was it like having to deal with that at such a young age? Um, <clears throat> it, it, when I first played for England, it was against Northern Ireland. Mm. I didn't do that well. And um, my second game was against Wales. And that's when I got man of the match. I set up two goals and then scored a one. So we won 3 1. And I was, you know, I was just doing my stuff. And then that's when, as you said, everything went mad. So when I went to. Liverpool, United, Leeds and Arsenal. Um, after I came back from Liverpool, because I remember these times, when I went to Liverpool, my parents were in Gambia mm -hmm. at the time, they were on holiday. Mm -hmm. So, when um, when they found out what was going on, they just said to me, look, calm down, stay st stay calm and whatever, so we're coming over, we're coming back. So, But it was, 
it was it was crazy. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely mad. Um, that's when it, the pressure started hitting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when it started. Uh, I couldn't walk properly. On, I couldn't walk on the street because mm -hmm. it, it, you know everything was on the television, mm -hmm. on the newspapers, and you know. Peckham's 1.5 million kid. Mm -hmm. So things change for a lot of money at the time. And with that, like, how do you make a decision? Um, so I'm sure there was like lots of offers. And yeah, yeah. So I decided that I wanted to go with Liverpool because the ba the fact that I wanted to go with Liverpool, I went to all those clubs, but Liverpool showed more interest. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when Joe Arroyo, who was the manager at the time, asked me who was my favourite player, and it was Michael Owen. Mm -hmm. So um, I told him that it was Michael Owen, and um, you know they made sure that he called me when I got back and just spoke to me and just told me what he feels. You know it would be great for me to play with him mm -hmm. at Liverpool, and I couldn't let Michael down. Could I? <laughs> <laughs> so I just decided, you know, <coughs> I'm a Manchester United fan. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so but United um, Liverpool showed more interest mm -hmm. and. Um, it was nice. Yeah. It was nice, and then I just decided I was going to go to Liverpool. And then um, what happened was we kept getting back and forth, back and forth, until about three, four weeks. Then my dad one time called me from the from upstairs to the kitchen and said, "Look, I need to speak to you." So I came down in the kitchen, and then he said, "Look, um, have you noticed that your mom's not the best lately?" So I said, "Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with her. She's not herself for the past couple of weeks." He said, well, she's obviously disappointed for you because um, uh, the deal's off, you know, going to Liverpool. And um, I remember I was just devastated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just dropped on the floor and just started crying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. just, yeah, it was a bad time. Mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah. I, but, think, but I think prior to that, yeah. though, <clears throat> the build-up was so immense. Mm -hmm. It was almost like it was inevitable he's going to Liverpool. It was... Yeah. It was it Hey guys, so we're just going for a quick break, but we'll be right back. A date for your diary, Gambian Fashion and Exhibition Weekend. Designers are welcome to register interest. It's all about raising awareness of the fantastic work being done in our community. Award night, fashion night and exhibition of top class only. This event is sponsored by Gam Designers UK. Ha. Yo, this one for a blessed Gambia. The more we work a land not far away where the sea meets the shore on a golden beach where the river flows through the forest in a thousand creeks a place where people smile and say hello welcome to the Gambia the smiling coast of Africa the Gambia is the destination for a fabulous holiday a love of nature is in the soul of the country. The many forests and parks teem with wildlife. Up in the trees, red and green monkeys gather and sometimes come down to play. Other natives of this forest are perhaps shy. If you love bird watching, this is one of the best places in the world to see them. Over 560 species live in and migrate to our land. Organised tours with expert guides make it easy to spot some of the many rare species which abound in the forests. If it is luxurious surroundings and a warm welcome you're looking for, 
This is the perfect place. On the golden sands by the mighty ocean, our fabulous hotels offer everything modern travellers would expect. High quality, attention to detail, personal service and more. Imagine a private retreat buried deep in the forest. A special place to relax, recharge and get in touch with our culture and nature. So go discover the smiling coast of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, Interface Gambia TV is back again to recognize the fantastic work by professionally and hardworking individuals. Friday, 20th of June, 2019, we will begin with an award night and a welcoming canopy. Dinner dance from 8 p.m. till 1 a.m. Live at King George, 713 Eastern Avenue, Ilford, London, IG2, 73H. Please be there on time. We are going to recognize and create platforms within our society and give opportunity to upcoming young people. Saturday, 29 June, UK's Gambian Fashion Runway Show, live at the King George 713 Eastern Avenue, 7RH with Gambian top fashion designers and a welcoming cocktail refreshment. Come and support. See for yourself. Elegant fashion and designs from the smiling coast of Africa. 8 p.m. till 1 a.m. Sunday, 30th. Fashion exhibition with all the top designers and kids from Day Bouncy Castle, Face Painting and Food Stalls at the Bowling Back in Road London. E6, 1PW from 3 p.m. till 10 p.m. It's just a one ticket for all events. People over 25 years. Is 35 pounds under 25, 25 pounds. Those under 15, only 15 pounds. These tickets are only available online for now, and the offer ends May 28. For more info, please visit www.ukgambianfwe.co.uk. It's a red carpet door with a welcoming canopy. For table booking, please contact Ticket Box Office 0208 998 1007 or 07538 103 379. Interface TV with us, the Gambia Chica. Chicken and wreck. This event is powered by Gambia High Commission London, Gam Design, Small Wall Money Transfer, The Pregame Hotel, Norton Garden Services, Mr. Jamil Trawale, Jalof Flavors, Juf Hair Beauty Salon, IKEA Resource, Mr. Young's Dabo, Jesse Event, Global Properties, and Suma Africa Online Newspapers. Welcome back from the break, guys. We're still here with Festus and Cherno talking about his journey in football. Pretty much thought that's where he's going. Yeah. So all the press was saying it, all the you know, the football people and you know, in football they kinda of tell you what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. it's, it's always that. And he's young. Mm -hmm. And he's being told, You are going here, mm -hmm. this is what's happening. And then to be told you're not going. Mm -hmm. That really I couldn't I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. comprehend it. But something bizarre happened while I was there. I was only fifteen and um, I thought to myself, while I'm crying, I'm thinking, I don't know why I thought about this um, I said, look, I don't want nothing to do with football. I've quit. I'm not going to play football mm. again. However, if I was to go back to football, I want to make sure that after football, I'm secured financially mm -hmm. for myself and my family. Mm -hmm. That was why I thought about it at that age. <laughs> I don't, don't know. know yeah. But that came. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. thought, if I finish football, I want to make sure that I'm secured financially mm -hmm. and my family. That's all I cared about. Mm -hmm. And thank God, yeah. yeah. You, you were know, able to do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. able to do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and then after that, things changed for me. I, mm. I didn't enjoy the football, so I stopped playing for six months after that. Mm. Yeah, I said I didn't want nothing to do with it. So he kept talking to me and said, look, this is your talent, you mm. got to go back. And my mum and dad said, look, we have to sort something out because you have to go back. Mm -hmm. This is your God's given talent. <clears throat> so, so in the end, we spoke to Mill and then I went back. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's different when he went yeah, back. It, was mm, it wasn't the same, I can imagine. The love isn't there. Yeah. You know, yeah. He's doing it as a job yeah. mm. and the other side of it which um, I guess is covered more in the story but like Mill at the time because he wanted to leave and the way he wanted to leave mm. was like I'm going mm. you know and the, it wasn't managed well enough mm. and I think when you have people around adults I guess because at the time he was a child, child yeah. the adults around the situation I don't think handled it in a way that was productive for him mm -hmm. so Kind of, not, I wouldn't say burning bridges, but it was it was this level. It was this kind of I'm moving on from mm -hmm. it, and it wasn't done in the, in the right way. Right. So when he ne now came back, the energy was different mm -hmm. from, from the club, and um, yeah, yeah some some some, mm -hmm. some dark times, some some individuals over there, and it, 
So it just became a chore, I think. And didn't yeah, it just at work. You didn't well, enjoy it as much. Yeah, yeah. 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 I feel like I love the game very early. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then coming back to it, how did you regain that kind of... Um, so I stayed there <clears throat> until I was 19. And then um, uh, a club in Spain called Cadiz, they came in for me. They knew about my story. So um, so they got me over there and then they gave me a four-year four, four year contract. Mm. Yeah, four-year contract. And then um, so I thought, Wow, Spain in La Liga, great weather, great food. What more do you want? Um, but when I went there, they got me a house, up, you know, overseeing the beach. And it was beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful. Um, getting paid very well mm. at that age. And um, so, what more do you want? Mm. But um, I was isolated. Mm. I was lonely. I was. Um, I felt in myself that I failed in my own country. So that's mm. why I had to shift out to Spain. To another country, yeah. And I kept thinking about the deal in Liverpool because I didn't recover from this. Mm -hmm. so I just kept thinking about it. What could have been, what could have been, what could have been. So it was constant in my head. Yeah. Yeah, so, because um, you were there this whole time, so how did you find being a support system as your best friend? It was, at the time, because we kind of, so when he first got to Spain, he was really excited and it was, it was great. And I wasn't got. I don't know what I was doing at the time, mate. What was I? He doing? just had a he just had a uh, job offer, and um, what happened was we fell out a little bit. Mm. Oh yeah. His, um, <clears throat> he was the only one that would tell me what the, the truth, the, the truth. Mm -hmm. and everyone else, all our all my other friends and everyone else, they tell me what I wanted to hear mm. because they didn't want to upset me for whatever they want to gain from me. Mm. I was sponsored by Nike, and every single one of them were asking for trainers, mm. boots. T-shirt, mm -hmm. shorts, and up. he's the only one that never asked me for nothing. Mm -hmm. And I used to always tell him, look, let's go night time, I can get your stuff, yeah. I can just go there, and then the shop's open for me. And they'll have to shut the, 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 the shop for me to get whatever I want. Mm -hmm. So just come, let's go, let's go. He didn't want nothing. Mm -hmm. So when he's telling me the truth, I didn't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, shut up, I don't want to hear it. I was a hater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, um, so we fell out for about a few months, mm -hmm. and in that, period of that few months that's when I just went to Spain mm. but then after we um, so I think I saw yeah. I saw him just before us before you just before you left yeah because it was a dark time for him because I think he just left Millwall and there's like I guess the part you're missing out is not many clubs in the UK mm. there's a, they kind of blackballed him a bit okay. because bearing in mind the Liverpool deal didn't work out so he's back at Millwall attitude's not great the relationship with the club is not amazing so they, they've made sure they've told other clubs, look, this China boy don't touch him. <laughs> it's trouble. So at that time, he's still playing. Bear in mind, he's still playing for England. You, this, oh, okay. this is weird. Yeah. He's still playing for England. So you're playing at the highest level, yeah. but no club, club yeah. will come in for you. It's very weird. Um, but in Europe, it's a very different kettle of fish. Mm -hmm. and European clubs are just they just move much more fluidly. Um, so when he went to Spain, at first it was it was difficult for him. He loved it at first, don't get me wrong, but it's difficult for him because he's, like he said, he's isolated. Mm -hmm. There's no one to talk to. His mobile bill was insane. <laughs> it was like my best friend. Yeah. 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 No, 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 no. It was insane. Oh, wow. mobile, every month, it was crazy. It's oh. more than a thousand pounds oh, a month. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. I was just on it constant. Oh, wow. Constant. Just you have to remember, you, when you, you have a go, when you have, you have a training or you're playing a game, so you've got loads of time on you. Mm. <laughs> so just be on the phone, talk, calling whoever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't really get out there at first. I think I just either took a new job or I can't remember, something had come up. Um, and obviously you had your... Yeah, so experience. after that, it's, um, it was just eating me away. It was mm. just eating me I just kept thinking about the Liverpool deal. Why it didn't happen? Why didn't it happen? Why didn't it happen? So, and bear in mind, I'm looking at players in the Premiership that are playing week in, week out. That, they're my substitutes for mm -hmm. the England national team but they're playing in the Premiership. Mm. So I'm like, what's happening here? Um, so what I used to do, I was just, I was depressed. I was really depressed. Mm. And um, I used to take some tablets from the club. I just did, I just wanted to end my life mm -hmm. because I thought, I can't deal with this anymore, mm -hmm. I can't. And then um, one day I took so many tablets and um, the guy that used to pick me up from to go training, he came and obviously knocked on the, uh, he normally called my phone for me to come down, but he called me, okay, and no one that. answered, mm -hmm. no, I didn't pick up. So he goes, this is not normal, this is not Chernobyl, because normally as soon as he calls, I'm downstairs. 
they go, there's something going on. So he kept calling nothing. So we came upstairs, knocked on the door. No one answered the door. Obviously, I'm lying. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so he said, nah, this is not normal. So he phoned the club, said, look, I'm trying to get the journal, blah, blah, blah. So he just brought the door and then, you know, Changing. called it Faith. Yeah. And, um, and he just found me lying there. So he called the paramedics and all that stuff. So, so I woke up in hospital, but I hated myself. I'm mm -hmm. like, this is not me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very chirpy. I'm very fun guy. I'm very happy. And mm -hmm. this is so many kids' lives, dreams that mm -hmm. we want to be. Why am I doing something like this? And, you know, with my faith as well. So I hated myself and I said, nah, I've got to sort myself out. Mm -hmm. And then dust myself. And because I'm a strong, strong character anyway, you know, it's just what you've done for me. Mm -hmm. You've done. I think after that, mm. he called me and, um, See, I didn't know about the incident. In fact, I didn't know about this until he wrote the book. Oh, wow. Nobody knew. He didn't tell anyone. Mm. But I remember he called me. He was like, look, Fest, from now on, I need you to come out here regularly. Like, I'm mm. like, yeah, I've already told you I'm coming. I go, no, 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 I'll be regularly. Mm. For his book. I didn't think anything of it at the time. But then I'd come every... Two, three weeks. Yeah, wow. we're out there <laughs> regularly. So it'd be me and some other boys would come as well. We'd just have fun. Mm. Um, yeah, it became my second home. <laughs> <laughs> so that helped him, I guess, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. Mm -hmm. to adjust and kind of just, yeah, climatize a bit more to to the area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you say there's, this is common with like a lot of young guys that have to leave home and leave everything they know to go to another country, be isolated and alone? It can be. Yeah, yeah I don't, you know, for me, I did it when I was doing it. I was the first, one of the first English players that actually did that. Okay. So when I went there, the, the, the likes of David Beckham, Michael Owen, they were, they were, they were there. They were playing in, in Spain. But for a young kid, it's very difficult. They don't like to go and mm -hmm. play in Europe or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I did it at the age of 19. So, mm -hmm. but it can be, yeah, it can be very, very isolated if you don't have this. You, you know, got to think of, network. think of the contrast of growing up in an African household mm -hmm. where you guys wish now it is where every other day there's a hundred people in your house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, in and out, yeah. aunties, uncles, cousins. Mm -hmm. It's always, to an extent where even getting, being in your own bedroom. It's a problem, it's a bit of a problem, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but that's normal for us, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And like, or going to someone's house, just knocking on the aunties, yeah. getting mm -hmm. some food. Going from that to being alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even when you were in all that noise, you want to, I wish I was by myself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've got it. <laughs> and not only you, are you by yourself, you're black. Mm -hmm. And not only you're black, they're speaking Spanish, mm -hmm. and, and, you're, and you're just looking yeah. at them. Yeah, because you learn to speak Spanish. Yeah, right? and because of that, I had to learn the language. Mm. I told the club, I said, look, I need a tutor. So you, they put that in my contract that oh. I had to have a tutor, have to have a tutor that will teach me the language. And mm. I learned it in eight months. Wow. Yeah. It was weird. When we, <laughs> one time, all of us went over, there was about three or four guys who went over there, and we were in a cab. And he's talking over to the cab driver in Spanish. I swear, <laughs> we thought he was messing up. <laughs> so I said, look, don't mock this guy. Because he's, he's driving us somewhere. Really. Like, if you mock him, you can leave him somewhere. And the guy's talking back to him, and we're like, I think he's proper <laughs> shocked us. Even to this day, he can still hold it down and speak. Yeah. <laughs> so then did that kind of help them, you being able to speak the language? Did yeah, it kind of yeah, bring that, you more back to it? Mm. Because when I was playing as well, um, that my teammates and the manager so the manager would speak in spanish and there was a guy who would translate to me mm. but his english was not the best <laughs> he would just say so i had to force myself to learn the mm -hmm. language and that really helped because i could understand what the players are saying mm -hmm. and more importantly the manager mm -hmm. so okay. yeah so it took me eight months yeah you know, so it was good. that's amazing how thing. We're just gonna go on a quick break, but we'll be right back with Festus and Chema. There is a land not far away, where the sea meets the shore on a golden beach. Where the river flows through the forest in a thousand creeks. A place where people smile and say hello. Welcome to the Gambia, the smiling coast of Africa. The Gambia is the destination for a fabulous holiday. A love of nature is in the soul of the country. The many forests and parks teem with wildlife. Up in the trees, red and green monkeys gather and sometimes come down to play. Other natives of this forest are perhaps shy.
If you love bird watching, this is one of the best places in the world to see them. Over 560 species live in and migrate to our land. Organized tours with expert guides make it easy to spot some of the many rare species which abound in the forests. If it is luxurious surroundings and a warm welcome you're looking for, this is the perfect place. On the golden sands by the mighty ocean, our fabulous hotels offer everything modern travellers would expect. High quality, attention to detail, personal service and more. Imagine a private retreat buried deep in the forest. A special place to relax, recharge and get in touch with our culture and nature. So go discover the smiling coast of Africa. A date for your diary, Gambian Fashion and Exhibition Weekend. Designers are welcome to register interest. It's all about raising awareness of the fantastic work being done in our community. Award night, fashion night and exhibition of top class only. This event is sponsored by Gam Designers UK. Ha. Yo, this one for a blessed Gambia. The more we work together, the more we celebrate. The more we come together, the more we celebrate. Come on, let's get together. There's a place I love to be. The Gambia, the Gambia. Fun and so bright by the beach. The Gambia, the Gambia. All this love, come share with me. The Gambia, the Gambia. Ladies and gentlemen, Interface Gambia TV is back again to recognize the fantastic work by professionally and hardworking individuals. Friday, 20th of June, 2019, we will begin with an award night and a welcoming canopy. Dinner dance from 8 p.m. till 1 a.m. Live at King George, 713 Eastern Avenue, Ilford, London, IG2, 73 Head. Please be there on time. We are going to recognize and create platforms within our society and give opportunity to upcoming young people. Saturday, 29 June, UK's Gambian Fashion Runway Show, live at the King George. 713 Eastern Avenue, 7 RH with Gambian top fashion designers and a welcoming cocktail refreshment. Come and support, see for yourself. Elegant fashion and designs from the smiling coast of Africa, 8 p.m. till 1 a.m. Sunday, 30th, fashion exhibition with all the top designers and kids from Day Bouncy Castle, face painting and food stalls at the Bowling Back in Road London, E6, 1PW, from 3 p.m. till 10 p.m. It's just a one ticket for all events. People over 25 years, 30 under 25 pounds. Under 25, 25 pounds. Those under 15, only 15 pounds. These tickets are only available online for now and the offer ends May 28. For more info, please visit www.ukgambianfwe.co.uk. It's a red carpet door with a welcoming canopy. For table booking, please contact Ticket Box Office 0208 998 1007 or 07538 103 379. Interface TV. With us, the Gambia Chikau Chikana. This event is powered by Gambia High Commission London, Gam Design, Small World Money Transfer, The Pregame Hotel, Norton Garden Services, Mr. Jamil Trawale, Jalof Flavors, Juve Hair Beauty Salon, IKEA Resource, Mr. Young Dabo, Jesse Event, Global Properties, and Suma Africa Online Newspapers. Welcome back from the break. We're still here with Festus and Channel to get to uh, and also they were giving you like medication so sounds like the team was very very supportive. They were very supportive. Mm -hmm. They were very 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 supportive. Yeah, definitely, you know. Um 
after when my incident happened, I had, I came home for about a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. you know, I had three, three weeks. And normally that doesn't, you know, that doesn't happen. happen. So yeah, I think it was as well encouraging you to kind of bring your missus over as well. Yeah, yeah. That's so at the time, I had a girlfriend. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so they were forcing me, sort of, not forcing me, but to encouraging, you. encouraging me to. Settle down, really. Mm -hmm. I don't think one of you to take any more pills. <laughs> <laughs> over <laughs> so I called my mom and I, I called my dad, and my mom was like, I remember, and I know it, my mom was like, Mary. <laughs> and I'm like, well, she needs to come over. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. And then so my mom and dad were very supportive. I said, right, mm -hmm. well, let's get this sorted quicker. And then I got married to her, and um, now we've got two kids together, mm. and we're still going. Yeah. <laughs> and like you talk about how supportive your parents were, because I feel like a lot of our parents, because it's the thing where there's so many little boys that are like, I want to be a footballer. Mm. So, yeah. how important was it in your journey that your parents were so supportive of that journey? Um, the thing with my my dad was, he's a very he's a very intelligent man, very intelligent, and um, he always. Right, you can play football, but just think about the education side mm -hmm. of it as well. Mm -hmm. Even though all I wanted to do was playing football, mm -hmm. but he would always remind me, look, homework, what are you gonna, you know, all that stuff. So he was he was balanced with what I was mm -hmm. doing. Now, what I'll say to these young kids that want to play football and stuff, don't forget your education. Mm -hmm. It's vital. Mm -hmm. It's very very important because not everyone makes it, mm -hmm. and I was fortunate to make it but not everyone makes it. Mm -hmm. Now, out of 10 players, probably one, one makes it. Mm -hmm. That's even worse That's, than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it can be worse than every hundred. Mm -hmm. You know, every hundred is only few. So, but everyone, I see people now, that, you know, I get so many phone calls, it's beyond belief, where my son plays football, can you help him? And I'm like, just let him do, <laughs> do what, he's, what doing. he's doing. And mm -hmm. if he's meant to be a footballer, he'll meant to be a footballer. Mm -hmm. I don't have to take a kid to go and take him to a club. Mm -hmm. the, the, the beauty the about football is, even if you're playing in the park, you'll get spoiled. Mm -hmm. That's the deal. I don't have to take a, kill a, a kid and take them and put them into a club because what you're trying to do is you're trying to force them. Mm -hmm. You understand? I got scouted by playing for my Sunday League yeah. football club. And the fact, the fact <laughs> is that the fact is that are involved in you succeeding aren't what you think. Yeah. Mm. Some people think, oh, because I can do 100 kick-ups and dribble the whole team, <laughs> I'm going to make it. Mm -hmm. It's not that straightforward. Mm -hmm. Where we grew up, we had players. majority of the boys they were ball ballers, they like great players. Mm -hmm. You just thought they're going to make it. Yeah. But there's so many things that they are, didn't. you know, but again, his parents were extremely supportive. You have to know that if your child is good at something, you have to back them. Yeah. And you know, with our culture, like education comes first, no mm -hmm. matter what. Even if your son is gold enough mm -hmm. football, go read your book. Mm -hmm. So that was, I guess, yeah. my own kind of, mm -hmm. um, struggle because I loved playing football mm -hmm. but my dad was on my case. He was good as well by the way. Yeah. Mm. He was good. <laughs> <laughs> was right. so my dad was always on my case so because of that and I enjoyed learning mm. and I think I made a decision at one point I think we sat down one day it's like you know bro football is your thing mm. and whilst I love playing football it doesn't mean as much to me like yeah mm -hmm. I don't know I and mean, he realized that early does that like, yeah. there's not many people who realize yeah. that. and mm -hmm. I think it's that living your truth like mm -hmm. you know look, i love playing football yeah, but realistically maybe i'm not i'm not i'm not you're not half for it yeah i, I can see myself making money in mm -hmm. other ways mm -hmm. and i think that's what helped it up with our friendship when he's going to nike town and saying come let's go i'm like why mm -hmm. come get some trainers i've got trainers mm -hmm. i can buy it. Mm -hmm. I've got yeah. money it's all right yeah. and like 10 15 boys are falling out to office <laughs> half these boys don't even know yeah. and it was yeah, it was weird. I think that's how we used to fall out, what we yeah. fell out. But yeah. I say to him, these boys, they're not for you. Mm. Mm. They're not for you. Jim. But it's vital to have that one person in your life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because always going to tell yeah. you the truth. And, he, and he worked her perfect. Yeah. Now, you know, we're, we're best friends and mm. we've got so many businesses that we do together. Mm. And financially, we're stable. Um, so, thank God. And the same boy. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? When, when it got dark for him before he went to Spain, um, because there's a period of time he's looking for a club up in, in the UK to try and play, in England, sorry, to try and play for. And all those friends that were about, come come find them. Yeah. Friends. Always. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, like literally, <laughs> yeah, friends. <laughs> I used to get home from, say, uni or whatever, and on the estate, there'd be enough people. Like, mm -hmm. just, 
But who are these people? Mm -hmm. Like, who are they? Mm -hmm. Nah, this is my boy from da da da, <laughs> and this is da da da, and they're excited. Yeah, China, listen, I'll come back here after. We're gonna go here, and I'm like, <sighs> and the thing is, you know, you can always tell. Mm -hmm. And it's not even rocket science. You could just tell. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I guess from his point of view, the whole world is telling you you're great. He's not gonna like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. like, really, and he's young. Like, who's gonna? You can't fault him for that. Mm -hmm. But me, I'm like, nah. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, sometimes I could overhear people talking about things when he's when he wasn't there. Like, oh, bro, ask him, just ask him, uh. <laughs> ask him, ask him. Find out what day he's going. And little things like that. And like, what's up with that? Mm. Don't tell him, bro. These prayers are not for you no. at all. And because you're here, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Go find them and see and tell me how it's going. But then it's a part of life isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah you live and you learn don't you exactly mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to actually go through the downfall because it's true you find out who really oh, is yeah, there yeah. Yeah. and what kind of and you learn a lot when, well. they, when they pop up in later years it's very funny <laughs> <laughs> very, very funny you know I've been battered and stamped and all the disappointments and stuff and mm. I couldn't be better equipped mm -hmm. than mm. anything mm. I've learned so much from my experience and stuff to put me in a position that I am today mm -hmm. and it's funny we talk about it all the time and saying some of them come and I'm thinking, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, just stay away. <laughs> <laughs> the glamour of football, people think that well, don't get me wrong, there's there's some the pros are amazing. Mm -hmm. You get great money and mm -hmm. like all this like adulation mm -hmm. from people and it's 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 great. But it can be a very lonely business when you get released from a club and you've got to go find a new club and mm -hmm. you're kind of have this nomadic experience like existence where you're just kind of going around and <clears throat> and you sometimes you find yourself in a country where like when he first got to Spain because Spain's not the only country that he played in he played in several countries in Europe mm. and sometimes it's really lonely mm. yeah you're getting loads of money but is it really worth it if yeah but then people yeah. will be on the other side be like what are you talking about you're getting thousands of pounds yeah. <laughs> just chill like it's not that it's, it's not all about money is it mm. it is, it is. Mm. but it's hard to Maybe someone say that's rich people problems. Mm. <laughs> but it's relative though, isn't it? Mm, that's yeah. his problem that he's having. There's no one to speak mm, to. Mm. Or, you know, you're in a country where they don't want to pass the ball to you in training. That mm. like they've talked among or they're making weird racial kind of comments. comments. Mm. You know. How so, was that trying to deal with the racism? Yeah, that was that was tough. Um, <laughs> I remember in Spain they used to say this thing where before I spoke, uh, knew how to speak the language, they used to say, don't, don't pass it to the black kid, don't pass it to the black kid. They'd say that in Spanish they on the in Spanish, mm. yeah. so, um, so when I learned the language, that, that's what forced me as well to, mm. learn how to know what's going on. So when I learned the language, um, one of the guys said it again, I said, don't pass it to the black kid. And I replied to him saying, no, pass it to the black kid. <laughs> <laughs> and after they just embraced it, you know. Yeah. Mm. I didn't, I didn't want to make it into a, a problem where it's going to affect me, mm -hmm. you understand? Because mm -hmm. sometimes you take certain negative things and turn it into a positive. positive. So instead of me moping myself or whatever, I said, right, I need to learn this language so that I know what they're saying. At least then they don't know who I am. And they got this black kid from England earning so much money. Mm -hmm. More than them. More than them. So mm -hmm. he's going to come and take us place. And these things happen. Mm -hmm. Intimidation. So, so, right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I took up on that and said, right, I want to make sure I fit in. So by learning the language, they said, don't pass it to the black kid. And I replied to them, I said, pass it to the black kid. Mm. And they loved it. Yeah, you had to stop. Mm. loved it. Mm. Remember that time? Um, but I know he'd learned the language yeah. and we came over there. And um, someone someone said, make, make, what's, what's it was you? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's no, what happened was, he, they came down and then went to the shop. And then he, uh, 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 Spanish, Negro is black. Okay, so he was asking for something that was, and then the shopkeeper said, Oh, uh, es olivel negro. Like, I just said something negro, and he went mad. I'm here on holiday. I said, No, 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 negro means black. I had to stop him. I had to say, Look, you don't count that negro means black. Are you sure? Negro in Spanish means black. So uh -huh. I had to calm him down and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so but this is what I mean by learning the language. Mm. I didn't know it. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah it would be a big issue. issue got arrested. Yeah, it would be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that is actually so funny. Yeah. But um going to like football, we wanna move it to Africa because mm -hmm. obviously the Gambian team has still <laughs> 
yet to qualify for anything. Mm. So anything. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah. Sorry, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. anything. So, so um, what what would you say is holding us back? How long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> um, like when you played for Gambia, what was it like? There's a lot of things that's holding us back. Mm. A lot of things. Um, Wow, um, it's a collective thing for me. Um, playing in England and being in the system since when I was a kid and playing for the England national team all the way to the under 21s. The way we do things is backwards. Um, you know, a lot of people are here about, people talk about, is the infrastructure, is the GFA, which I've touched on before we okay. came on life, is the GFA, and the people behind it and all that stuff. Yes, they have a part to play. And on all organizations, you got to share responsibilities. And the GFA and the people behind the Gambian football have a massive part to play in terms of the infrastructure, everything else. On the other hand, the players, us, I'll include myself, has a big part to play as well. Um, we're the one that's on that pitch not the GFA, mm -hmm. not the supporters. And sometimes you have to get it in, in you to take it out, to be able to deliver. Now, I remember in my time, and this including me, I'm not saying anybody else, um, where it would be a camp and some of our girlfriends will come and see us. That's not right. Mm -hmm. That's not right as a professional. Um, so, for example, I'll just give one example which I touched on earlier. We went to, when I was playing for England, we went to Tunisia. And when we went there, the pitch we were playing was poor. The food was not the best. The hotel was not the best. The bus, we had the delays at the airport for about three, four hours. Everything was just chaos. Mm -hmm. Now, England did that. The FA did that on purpose to see our reaction. So we went out and we beat Tunisia 3-1. So we produced with all those obstacles. Mm -hmm. So there's a reason why sometimes you have to overcome certain difficulties mm -hmm. to get to where you want to get mm -hmm. to. But if I keep saying, if we keep saying, making excuses all the time, oh, I can't do this because of this. I can't do this because, well, you're an excuse. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe in excuses. Mm -hmm. So we keep badgering about our infrastructure is not good. Yes, I get that. But us individual players, we have to look upon ourselves. Gambians, when we have something little, we're content with that. Mm -hmm. We don't move, we don't push. Mm -hmm. So a Gambian player can come to Europe and earn 3,000 pounds a month. That's nothing, mm -hmm. really. Well, it's something in Gambia. Mm -hmm. But you have to push that don't content with that 3,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. The likes of Yaya Toure, who are earning £250,000 a week, they're not better than us. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, for a Gambian to come and be earning £3,000 a month and said, yep, I've made it. I'm content with that. Mm -hmm. So you don't push the next level mm -hmm. to get to the top. And this is the problem we have. And you have to look at yourself. That's where the problem starts. Mm -hmm. Don't look at anybody else. Don't look at these job blocks. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself. Accept your responsibilities, then move forward. Mm -hmm. If you want to better yourself, you've got to look at yourself in the mirror first. Now, as I said earlier, we have a game 72 hours in Gambia, and our girlfriend's coming to the camp to see us. How are we going to perform? Mm -hmm. That's one aspect. Mm -hmm. Three hours before a game, we're eating rice. <laughs> <laughs> How are we going to perform? You know? Sloppy. You have to. So there are. So many things, nutritionists is vital. Um, professionalism, all there's so many things. That's why I said, do we have time? <laughs> <laughs> that is the problem. Mm. It's the problem. Mm -hmm. And um, until we rectify that upon ourselves, we've got a long, long way. I had a question for you though. Yeah. Might be going slightly left, I'm not sure, but controversial. Yeah. But you know, um Africa a lot of African countries always seem to go and get a European coach to come in. Yeah. And I guess they're <coughs> looked on as a kind of a white saviour and they come mm -hmm. a lot of the time they don't really produce anything mm -hmm. in particular. 
Yeah. Um, is that a help or a hindrance for, for I guess, for Gambia in particular? It helps and it can hinder. Mm. It helps, for example, if you're going to get a top, top coach who's done his, all his license and is a top coach, he can only help and, and help the, 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 the team. Mm. But if you've got a coach that has got their badges or who is nobody in terms of his um, career and whatever, then he's going to hinder because people ain't going to respect. For a player, as a coach, you need to be respected. Mm. Now, if you're coming, I'm a professional player, and if you're my coach, you need to back up what you're telling me mm. because I'm playing the game as well. Mm. So if you're telling me something that I ain't got a clue about, I'm not going to respect you. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing that I would say well, it, can, it can help and also. Hey guys, so we're just going for a quick break, but we'll be right back. a land not far away where the sea meets the shore on a golden beach where the river flows through the forest in a thousand creeks a place where people smile and say hello welcome to the Gambia the smiling coast of Africa the Gambia is the destination for a fabulous holiday a love of nature is in the soul of the country. The many forests and parks teem with wildlife. Up in the trees, red and green monkeys gather and sometimes come down to play. Other natives of this forest are perhaps shy. If you love bird watching, this is one of the best places in the world to see them. Over 560 species live in and migrate to our land. Organized tours with expert guides make it easy to spot some of the many rare species which abound in the forests. If it is luxurious surroundings and a warm welcome you're looking for, this is the perfect place. On the golden sands by the mighty ocean, our fabulous hotels offer everything modern travellers would expect. High quality, attention to detail, personal service and more. Imagine a private retreat buried deep in the forest. A special place to relax, recharge and get in touch with our culture and nature. So go discover the smiling coast of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, Interface Gambia TV is back again to recognize the fantastic work by professionally and hardworking individuals. Friday, 20th of June, 2019, we will begin with an award night and a welcoming canopy. Dinner dance from 8 p.m. till 1 a.m. Live at King George, 713 Eastern Avenue, Ilford, London, IG2, 73 Head. Please be there on time. We are going to recognize and create platforms within our society and give opportunity to upcoming young people. Saturday, 29th June, UK's Gambian Fashion Runway Show, live 
live at the King George 713 Eastern Avenue. Seven RH with Gambian stuff fashion designers and a welcoming cocktail refreshment. Come and support. See for yourself. Elegant fashion and designs from the smiling coast of Africa. 8 p.m. till 1 a.m. Sunday, 30 a.m. Fashion exhibition with all the top designers and kids from Day Bouncy Castle, face painting and food stalls at the Bowling Back in Road London. E6, 1 PW from 3 p.m. till 10 p.m. It's just a one ticket for all events. People over 25 years, 35 pounds. Under 25, 25 pounds. Those under 15, only 15 pounds. These tickets are only available online for now and the offer ends May 28. For more info, please visit www.ukgambianfwe.co.uk. It's a red carpet door with a welcoming canopy. For table booking, please contact ticket box office 0208-998-1007 or 07538-103-379. Interface TV. With us, the Gambia Chikau Chikanam Rec. This event is powered by Gambia High Commission London, Gam Design, Small World Money Transfer, the Pregame Hotel, Norton Garden Services, Mr. Jamil Trawale, Jalof Flavors, Juve Hair Beauty Salon, IKEA Resource, Mr. Young Dabo, Jesse Event, Global Properties, and Summer Africa Online Newspaper. Welcome back from the break, guys. We're still here with Festus and Chen now talking about his journey in football. And at the same time. But the fundamental problem we have is we're not honest to ourselves. Mm. That's the problem. Mm. Unfortunately, it can be. We're not honest to ourselves. You know, you know this is white, but you say, no, this is not white, this is black. Mm. To suit you. Mm -hmm. That's not right. And what I would say, I used to say this, and people used to laugh at me and say, I used to say, I don't think we'll, we'll qualify for African Cup of Nation or World Cup. Those people that will make us qualify, they're not born yet. I used to say this 10 years ago, and the people used to laugh at me. We're 10 years now, and we still have we're still here. Mm. Hopefully, on Friday, they might <laughs> do something. Get, mm. uh, we'll get qualified. Mm -hmm. But there's so many aspects that needs to be rectified mm -hmm. before we even think about anything. And even if we qualify now, even if, it's, if we qualify now, the root of the problem it's still there. Mm. So we might qualify. Yes, we we'll be happy. But we'll go and come back, probably. Because the problem is still there upon mm. ourselves. The GFA has a balance and it and, and one side to do what they need to do. Mm. And us players has one side to do what we need to do. Mm. And this is the problem. Okay. Yeah. And you are on the path of becoming a coach. Mm -hmm. Would you ever take on that role in Gambia? Yeah, eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um my main focus now is working in the academies here, learn my trade, do the things that is right, learn from my mistakes when I was playing, mm -hmm. smell the grass here, instead of, you know, before you run, you have to walk. walk. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just gonna get up and take that right now mm -hmm. because I'm not equipped and ready yet. Um, I need to learn my trade here, make my mistakes in terms of the pitch, learn from my experience, and then eventually, yes, I will. I will love to give, mm -hmm. give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'm welcome, <laughs> yeah. which hopefully you will. Mm -hmm. um, which leads on to more about the book. What do you expect the readers to learn from it? Um, a lot. Mm. A lot from Chernobyl Samba. Mm -hmm. My life. There was two reasons why I wrote the book, mm -hmm. and um, one of the reasons was. I wanted to get my frustration out. Mm -hmm. I wanted to tell my story mm -hmm. in terms of what's happened to me and what I did and what I should have done and all that stuff. And um, it's been a therapy for me, the mm -hmm. book, mm -hmm. you know. So that was one of the reasons why I came up with the book. And the second reason was for the next generation of human beings, not just footballers, but human beings generally, mm. they can read that book and say, right, I want to do it this way mm -hmm. because if I do it this way I will get to the top mm -hmm. or if I do it that way then I won't get anywhere mm -hmm. so they can learn from my mistakes learn from everything that I went through and then hopefully mm -hmm. if, I, if I can help one person we've done it I've accomplished mm -hmm. what I went mm -hmm. and how hard or easy is it to be 100% honest because you said that you learned some stuff in the book so what was that like 
How do you mean? So, like, because you said you didn't know about his incident. Oh, no, I did. Yeah, yeah. So, um, when you read the book, you, yeah. So mm-hmm. when you were writing it, how honest did you want to be? I want it to be. We had to hold some stuff, but <laughs> yeah. I was so honest that <laughs> yeah, we my had team to, behind me had to say, right, whoa. So it would have mm-hmm. been honestly would have been double the size. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Trimming it down, there was a lot of wars that yeah. we had. Jeez, mm-hmm. um, yeah. some late nights. Mm-hmm. I thought you can't say that. Yeah. And it's like well, it happened, mm-hmm. yeah. but the fact is. <laughs> Some of the individuals that he mentioned, like I, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. It, it would have been, it would have been serious. Mm. Like, football, I don't know. football, football people, mm. top people that are in the game mm. that you see on the TV every week. Mm. Week out. Yeah, so I don't want those problems. Yeah, mm-hmm. either mine, but I, I yeah. want mm-hmm. because I thought honesty is everything, mm. and um, my team had to hold me back and say, look. I know you're honest, but it just calm down mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know? Because it, 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 it turned into therapy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, um, obviously, the, uh, the biographer who was taking all the notes to, um, to transcribe and put in the book, I'm just sitting there, sometimes with my mouth open, like, damn. Mm-hmm. And he used to be flying for hours and mm-hmm. hours and hours, just getting all the stuff out. And when you hear some of the, st- like, I know some of the stories in, you know, from the incidents of other players and stuff, but some of the stuff is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had to keep reminding myself, he was so young when all this stuff was going on. So, when some of these footballers spin out of control, it's, I have sympathy. Because mm, you understand. Mm. I, I fully understand why. Like, sometimes the people, the, the, the people, and I say men, the men around you aren't for you. Mm-hmm. They, they want to know what they can get from you. And you don't see the kind of strings they're pulling until you spun out or done yeah. some weird stuff and or you've signed stuff over to them it's just it's there's a darkness i know i don't want to get too kind of yeah. <laughs> but there's there's a darkness to football that um it's, it's not as easy as people think yeah it's, mm. it's really it's they unfortunate it's and it's glamorous, it's, glamorous you know, yeah mm-hmm. we only see the that, from a certain perspective yeah the are like. the, exactly the, 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 the <laughs> yeah. and a great goal was in the mm. you know, Gillette adverts yeah. and stuff do you know yeah. mm. but there's a, mm. it can be lonely for, for yeah. players sometimes mm. if they haven't got people around them mm. like i guess over the years we've just got closer and closer and closer yeah. um but as he was saying, he's written this for the next generation. Not even just footballers, there are people out there who don't have anyone to to talk to. And I think the attitudes towards mental health is changing now. Mm-hmm. The landscape is very different yeah. now. And um, people are encouraged to talk. Mm-hmm. There's a weird side to it. People are talking a bit too much. Mm-hmm. And getting a bit, <laughs> some people are pretending that they're not. There's no real oh, mental health now. Yeah. Oh, come on, that's like, not, don't, don't do that. Like, mm-hmm. but, there's a genuine, it's good that even within our own culture, I'm seeing a slight yeah, change mm. where you couldn't talk about that. There was, there was yeah, just this yeah. But there's a reason he didn't talk about that at that time um, because yeah. our culture, you, nah. Because he didn't know how to, I it's, guess. There's yeah. a, you know, you're perceived as weak. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, and that was a problem. That was the problem for me. It's like you'd be looked up on, you be looked Damn. upon Damn, as yeah. weak and stuff. Mm. And I think I was weak for not speaking that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the truth. Mm-hmm. Things like depression, depression it's occurs. A real thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really. And it, people think of people who are depressed like, oh, yeah. yeah. You can't but see depression, a, yeah. And it's yeah. a thing where you could swing into it mm-hmm. and swing out. And mm-hmm. sometimes you don't even know you were depressed. depressed yeah. Like I look back on my life, I'm like, yeah, there were certain times yeah. it was dark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And the thing is, what you know, a lot of people think, you know, you get all this fame mm-hmm. and all this money and all these nice houses, nice cars, and they feel you should be all right. Yeah. And it's more not, money, it's, more problems. Yeah. yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, yes, I had all that. I have all that. But there was time where I just felt depressed. Mm-hmm. And I'm a human being. I just mm-hmm. felt depressed. Yeah. So, you know, I can talk about it now. Yeah. That's the past. Mm-hmm. It's then. Mm-hmm. But, it's um, but it's it's important for young people. Mm-hmm to be able to talk about it now mm-hmm. because you can save lives with this kind mm-hmm. of just by opening your yeah. mouth and speaking mm-hmm. and fine you can speak to your club and before but I mean even like at home yeah. now I see that that like I'm Ghanaian and um, our cultures are very similar in the way that you know the hierarchy and you just have to be mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. to carry yourself mm-hmm. a certain way but surprise how many parents now just just chat to their yeah. kids mm-hmm. it's important are you alright what's going mm-hmm. on 
Like I've, I've got four kids of my own and my oldest son, he's turning 14 next week. And um, I just chat with him sometimes. It's important. It just is. chat with him. Whereas I used to get spoken to yeah. by my parents. Mm -hmm. Just spoken to. Go and do this, go and do that. <laughs> and I've kind of come with it. And even if he's chatting a bag of nonsense, I'm just listening. <laughs> yeah. Because I've got to pick up the bits where, you know. Mm. Yeah. It's important. Something might be going on, yeah. And if, if, if this book helps that movement, then it can only be a good thing. Don't yeah. get me wrong, you're always going to have the, the fakers. The the <laughs> if, if it helps, then that's, that, that's mm. a great thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it is important, especially as men growing up. Most yeah. definitely. Um, maybe, yeah, Black men house, especially. Even like mm. if a boy cries, like why are you crying? Boys don't mm. cry kind of thing. So mm. I think it's very important mm. to put that message out that's there. That's mad that you say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that because, too, yeah. We thought to be strong, yeah, and, and to hide, yeah, everything, hide everything, right? everything. Yeah. Yeah. and in this day and age of social media, where it's weird, is isn't it? Mm. Yeah. yeah, like you be scrolling, like, oh, their life is so good, like, yeah. you don't comparing it to your own life, yeah, phones, like, it's all fake. <laughs> mm. I, think, so I, think. I love social media, like, we talk about it, like, <laughs> you know, it's like the other day. We had a friend of ours, not a friend, but yeah, another one. <laughs> Associate. And um, <laughs> yeah, you see him on social media and he's wiling out, he's going here, he's Living. doing this, he's doing <laughs> And then he called me over there and asked me to borrow me for money. <laughs> <laughs> like he, he's living he's, life yeah, on social media. He's living life on social media. On the gram, he's the guy. And then, but then you wonder, like, who is that for? Like, uh, it's weird. But then he calls him, oh, can you lend me some money? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, I'm, I'm broke. Like, mm. it's, it's, it's hard out here. So, yeah. It, but it's so. kind of scary, like, kids are growing up with, with that. With that. So mm. That's going to be all they know at the same time. So, <laughs> I think sharing stories like this is definitely. I so agree. Really brings people to grow and like it's normal to go through things it's yeah to be depressed. it's normal to not have stuff exactly <laughs> like it's okay to not have things you know <laughs> exactly like, even if you do you don't have to showcase it to no, the whole just world chill. Cause, just mm, chill like i think the biggest uh takeaway probably is nothing lasts forever no like no. you can be on a hundred today and then yeah. tomorrow is like, so gone, gone. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. all the people are gone so absolutely it's just there's yeah. no condition that's permanent mm. yeah. But I feel like a lot of people don't realise that there's all this societal pressure, which yeah. is why yeah. a lot of people do what they do on social media and I stuff think like that. I, it might, I might just be saying this because I'm black, but I find that our people have it worse. 100%. 100%. Because yeah. obviously I don't know the white experience, yeah. but mm. it just seems that we we have it worse. Because mm -hmm. I know we like to look good and yeah. style and mm -hmm. all that. But on social media, we go to mm. 10. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's really... So yeah, fake. Yeah, it's so fake. <laughs> like, it's actually quite scary. Mm -hmm. when, you see people rocking like 800 pound shoes, <laughs> yeah. but you know that their parents are living in the council. Mm. Exactly. What we do it doesn't make sense. It's yeah. Nah, and it's, it's priorities are all over the and place. And to maintain that lie, mm -hmm. you will do the maddest exactly. things. Mm. And some people are doing some dark stuff to mm -hmm. just to keep that image, yeah, mm. image. which yeah. is sad. It is sad. It's sad, but it's perpetual. Well, you've just got to be, um, you've got to be sensible, and it's, it's, it's difficult, you know, for. The young kids now because it's very hard to get through through to mm -hmm. them and um so you have to have a mindset of what you want follow your goal and just go for it mm -hmm. because the sky is the limit for everyone mm -hmm. um you know something i hate giving up i hate people who just say you know god decide not man mm -hmm. you know so as long as you know what i say to myself and i say to everyone is don't foul any human being Make sure you look after your parents. Pray to God. And there's nothing you should fear. Mm -hmm. These are the three things that I always say to myself. Mm -hmm. So and I told people that I um, speak to, which is pray to God, don't foul no human being, mm -hmm. i.e., you know, don't do nothing bad to human being, mm -hmm. and um, look after your parents. Mm -hmm. If you do these three, you've got a long way to go. Mm -hmm. and that's nice. To stop you. It's nice now yeah. because he does a lot of talks now and mm -hmm. like goes around. He was in. And to Dartmouth University in a, mm. uh, where is it? Yeah, it's yeah. University yeah. in the States and talking to all these smart people that <laughs> they know everything. <laughs> but yet they come to him after like thank you for that medal mm -hmm. mm -hmm. talking to some young people that are in a, like he does work for, he's an ambassador for football for peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's a big charity and um, he does little talks to some young and that kind yeah. of that giving black is like came down to oh, okay. yeah. yeah. So he's playing <coughs> these things. Yeah. But yeah. that stuff is 
there's no you can't put a value on no. that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's very necessary. It is. It's very especially now. Mm. It's needed and definitely yeah, needed. Yeah. So um what is it like now when people hear you sharing your story? And I know I'm sure there's a lot of people that resonate with it. Yeah, they're moved. Yeah. Um, some of them they're moved. Um and um some of them I can see that they will learn from me mm -hmm. and take advice of why I can give them. because I've been there. Mm -hmm. I've been there done it, I've been in the system, I've been there done it, got a t shirt. So there's not a better person to tell these people they, what to do yeah. and what not to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I wasn't somebody that's done it, then if I'm if someone if I'm telling someone then you may say, Well, you haven't experienced that. But I've experienced it. I've experienced all the good, all the bad, you know. So some of them take it, take it on board. And um, you know, I get calls everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, America, Germany, Sweden, China. I even speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> like, he gets, he gets wound up sometimes. <laughs> Everything goes to him, so yeah. he just have to deal with them and say, "Right, mm -hmm. this person, we need to do this." And mm -hmm. So, but you know, it's if I can help, then I'm open mm -hmm. to help anybody. And I think it is definitely doing something because I remember when your first, um, your story first came out, mm -hmm. like a lot of the aunties and uncles in the Gambian community mm. were talking about it because obviously really? you're Gambians. Yeah, yeah. my mum actually yeah. first told me about Chenro because he came yeah. on the news and everything yeah. and then she started oh, wow. calling like her friends yeah. and everyone was talking oh, about wow. it. So oh, wow. it definitely is yeah. doing something, like See, that's pushing somewhere. Yeah. me more. I mm. love that yeah. more. Mm. When our people like resonates. Mm. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone, oh, come on, put your books. Yeah. Okay, cool. mm -hmm. But when our like family members yeah. are like, like my dad, no, he was getting crazy. Yeah. <laughs> when I showed my dad the uh, the Sky Sport on yeah. BBC, one of the clips, yeah. Yeah. and he was like, "Chano, <laughs> <laughs> this little boy, and, <laughs> and he's lived, he's gone through that, and they just, for them, they feel so like, it's just, it's just nice. Mm -hmm. They're so mm -hmm. relieved that mm -hmm. we're okay, exactly. and it's just, yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see it in their eyes because mm -hmm. you know a lot of the choices and decisions that they made weren't the best. best yeah. They tried the best. They tried mm -hmm. to raise us the best way they could. With all the constraints that were in place, mm. but it pays off. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's it's nice that you hear mm -hmm. that yeah. all talking about <laughs> yeah. that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and it's that. nice because you're happy to talk about it. Mm. Yeah. We've yeah. seen you two went through a journey, and you've seen it all, and. Mm. You're here to tell it, so I think that's what makes them even more. Mm. I think some people are quite scared to talk about it as well, so maybe yeah. that's why it doesn't get out of there. Well, something. hopefully, things like this enable will open people up doors. Yeah, you have, have confidence. Mm -hmm. You have to. I, I'm always a confident person. It is what it is. Like so, I don't know. You know, um, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You fall down mm -hmm. and you get back up. Yeah, that's Simple. it. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I've been, yeah. I've been battered and mm -hmm. stamped, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been hard. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong; it'd be worse though. <laughs> If you were saying it's like life was rough, guys, it went wrong. That's what you do. Yeah. It's like nothing. But that's the that's the beauty of life. Mm. You have to get up. You have, if you don't get up, who's gonna who's mm -hmm. gonna get you up? Mm -hmm. So you have to dust yourself and keep get going. Up. 100%. That's where faith comes in. Exactly. Mm. That's what I was just about to say. That is a huge part. part. Huge part. It's important to be to have your faith mm. because. I've been battered and stunned, as I said, and he's been there with me throughout. God, he's been there with me throughout, and he's never let me down. Sometimes it's a test. Yeah. Mm. You know, we're Muslims, Christian, whatever. It's a test, and you have to have patience in him, believe him, and just carry on. Mm -hmm. You'll be fine, yeah. no matter how long it is, mm. because whatever he's put in there for you, you'll get it, you'll mm -hmm. reach it. Mm. So don't be, because some people, they run before they move. walk, mm -hmm. you know. I always say to people, life is a marathon. It's not a sprint, mm -hmm. it's a marathon. Um, we might start and you go, Poof, you just left me. Mm -hmm. I'll be walking, walking, doing the right things. I'll come and catch you and overtake you. So, I pray for you as you die. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. when you start in life and people have gone past you or whatever, don't look upon them to say they've gone past you and you're not doing nothing with your life and it makes you think, oh, what am I doing? No. Steady the ship. You carry on doing what you're doing. You're at uni. Do your uni. Carry on doing it. You've got a process. You've got a <coughs> strategy that you're going to get to. So don't worry about her or him. Mm -hmm. Let her go or let him go. You know your philosophy. You know what you're trying to get. Believe in him. Have patience in him and just keep going. Trust me. You go past him and overtake him. Mm -hmm. 
But a lot of people don't realize this. Mm. They think they just have to get up and run before they walk. Mm. And when they run, they drop. Mm -hmm. They think that's the end of it. Get up and just keep Turn going. Mm -hmm. Just keep going. Yeah. Faith is extremely important. It's very mm -hmm. important. A lot of young people are forsaking yeah. that mm -hmm. just to, just for that quick. Five minutes of bang. That mm -hmm. quick. They're yeah. doing. They're doing the what like crazy things. You know what? <laughs> What hurts me now is that a lot of young people are doing really dark things mm. and the whole devil stuff. I'm not like, yeah. I don't play that. Mm. I never, I remember even in school, random one, but do you, you know um, uh, Ouija board? Ouija yeah. board, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never forget in school, the kids that played with it like, want to come play? I said, for what? <laughs> and they were putting their hand things moving around. I said, no, nah, I'm not interested. Yeah. No word of a lie, all those young people that did that, their life is not. I don't play with that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And a lot of young people now, because they want that, that those quick wins, they're doing all the judge stuff mm -hmm. and, yeah. and putting on social media. Mm -hmm. What they're doing, like, mm -hmm. like they're doing their rituals on social yeah. media. It scares, it scares me mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny we're saying it because when we was growing up, we had friends that used to do all sorts of things. Mm. Go rubbing. We were young and they were bringing home like two, three, four hundred pounds those days. That was a lot of money back in those days. It was like five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like three pounds yeah. mm. a week. You understand? And when I used to go football training and he would go to the library, I'll never forget this. They used to stop us. I said, Where you look at? So I got to go football training. And they're like, oh, You're an like, idiot, man. Mm. You're not know, a waste, man. Mm. Look at him, him with his books. Look at you with your football boots. Mm. And look at him with his bag and his books. <laughs> mm. So he would go to the library, I go to my training. Today, those boys that were earning those sort of money and we were going to work, they come to us. Well, some of them are dead. Some of them are dead. Some mm. of them prison. come to us now and beg us. Mm. Literally beg us. They're all drugged up. They're all, they're gone. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm talking about, marathon. Mm -hmm. At that time, if we would have followed them as well because they're bringing that sort of money at that young age, mm -hmm. where would we be? Could have been in the same yeah. position. Mm. But we knew where we wanted. We knew where... At the time, I don't, think, I don't think we knew what... It's weird. At the time, I don't know if we knew what we wanted. We just, did. You just know that you didn't want to be where yeah, they are. That's yeah. what scared me. Yeah. I'm not like... Yeah. Mm. Taking knives and jumping. I'm not interested yeah. in mm. that. Long. Yeah. Plus... I'll keep it real. My dad, <laughs> I was scared of my dad. <laughs> like, I, was scared of, I, was, I was scared of my dad before police. <laughs> we, got, we scared stopped by the police, got raped yeah. in South mm. London. Yeah. I didn't care. Yeah. Just don't say you're going to tell my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you get fear. Yeah. What? Yeah. No, and, yeah. and that always, it's funny, even now. As old as I am, my dad calls my name in a certain way, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like what's up? You know, like, it, it's real. Mm -hmm. Respect, that's mm -hmm. what you, you, yeah, know, you have that. But yeah. the kids nowadays, they don't have the respect. Mm -hmm. you know, they don't, they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, some of them will get this book, mm -hmm. read it and learn mm -hmm. from it. And um, just change their perspective mm -hmm. of life. And where can people find your book? to read it. Chernosambo.co.uk <laughs> Chernosambo.co.uk yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, They buy it from there, um, mm. he'll sign it. And, mm. um, yeah. Oh, nice, signed as well. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, and where can people find you guys on social media if they wanted to follow you and see where you're um, talking and stuff? I'm on um, Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, Samga FC. Yeah. And I'm on Instagram. Cherno underscore Sam. <laughs> I'm on, I've got a Facebook page. Yeah. Just trying to sound. <laughs> <laughs> so my team runs everything. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's amazing. Thank you guys so much. It's been no, such an you. amazing it's been conversation. Good. It's been good. And you know, just want to say last thing. Where I think what you guys are doing yeah. is really good. It's amazing. And yeah. um, we need more of these sort of platforms mm -hmm. to, you know, galvanize the Gambian community, mm -hmm. African at large. Um, I think this is this is great. And yeah. I will say this great. here. <laughs> I've spoken to BBC, Sky Sports, CNN, Fox News, all around the world. And this is the most comfortable, mm. best interview that I've done. And I mean that. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been amazing, guys. Thank, thank you, cool. guys. Thank and you. thank you guys for watching Halei Jokhlen. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Was I was so interested. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. even yeah. like... Ladies.
Ladies and gentlemen, Interface Gambia TV is back again to recognize the fantastic work by professionally and hardworking individuals. Friday, 28th of June, 2019, we will begin with an award night and a welcoming canopy. Dinner dance from 8 p.m. till 1 a.m. Live at King George, 713 Eastern Avenue, Ilford, London, IG2, 73 Head. Please be there on time. We are going to recognize and create platforms within our society and give opportunity to upcoming young people. Saturday, 29th June, UK's Gambian Fashion Runway Show, live at the King George 713 Eastern Avenue. 7RH with Gambian top fashion designers and a welcoming cocktail refreshment. Come and support. See for yourself. Elegant fashion and designs from the smiling coast of Africa. 8 p.m. till 1 a.m. Sunday, 30th. Fashion exhibition with all the top designers and kids from Day Bouncy Castle, Face Painting and Food Stalls at the Bowling Back in Road London. E6, 1PW from 3 p.m. till 10 p.m. It's just a one ticket for all events. People over 25 years, 35 under 25 pounds. Under 25, 25 pounds. Those under 15, only 15 pounds. These tickets are only available online for now and the offer ends May 28. For more info, please visit www.ukgambianfwe.co.uk. It's a red carpet door with a welcoming canopy. For table booking, please contact Ticket Box Office 0208-998-1007 or 07538-103-379. Interface TV. With us, the Gambia Chikau Chikan. I'm wreck. This event is powered by Gambia High Commission London, Gam Design, Small World Money Transfer, The Pregame Hotel, Norton Garden Services, Mr. Jamil Trawale, Jalof Flavors, Juve Hair Beauty Salon, IKEA Resource, Mr. Youngs Dabo, Jesse Event, Global Properties, and Summer Africa Online Newspapers. Newspaper. Newspaper.